welcome to Metro Vancouver Close-Up, linking local actions with regional goals. Today, student action on waste, transportation training, and bees enrichment. More than 47% of the region's land base is designated as conservation and recreation, and more than 750 hectares have been added since 2011. In Richmond, an artistic buzz is highlighting the ways to enhance these valuable places, big and small. Culture Days 2015 is a nationwide celebration of arts and culture, and the City of Richmond offered 80 free opportunities to get creative and inspired. Bee-themed activities were complemented by a pollinator exhibit at the Richmond Art Gallery. We thought this would be the perfect event to bring in all the other people in the community that work with bees or work with sustainability, um, have the artists come in and do some workshops, do some fun activities for all ages. Participants at Richmond Culture Days helped cut bee shapes from paper embedded with seeds. The seed that we selected, it's called Basket of Gold. It's very hardy, grows really fast, and bees love it. So we've actually tested it. It's viable seed. They will sprout. Artists Cameron Karche and Jasna Guy created artwork inspired by bees. Their purpose is to educate people about the importance of pollinators. And another, called Not By Chance Alone, exposes the vast number of honeybees that are disappearing. A million hives being lost? then the numbers are extraordinary. It's a public art driven process for the betterment, for the promotion of ecology in the city. So it's a very unique and innovative union of ecology and art. Leslie and Cameron are also leading an artistic planting project in East Richmond's Bath Slough. With pollinator pastures, we're trying to provide more habitat for the bees because they've, they've had a fragmentation of their habitat. See, see right in front of you that furrow? Yeah, right there. Perfect. Our volunteers are going to work with us and we're going to actually lay out the bumblebee wing design and then plant it with the seeds that will come up next spring and it'll look like stained glass bumblebee wings. We've got uh, interpretive signage, we've got a bee hotel, we've got beautiful site furnishings that have been worked on through Emily Carr. And it's an earthwork that you can walk through or you can also see from the plane above because we're in the flight path for uh, YVR Airport coming into Vancouver. So come to Bass Slough and the Bridgeport Industrial Park next spring and summer. It will be flowering all summer long. With one in four bites of food, like chocolate or blueberries, created by a pollinator, local food systems stand to benefit from Richmond's spotlight on bees. In Metro Vancouver in 2011, 14% of trips in the region were taken by transit, and 73% by automobile. Surrey is helping citizens understand their transportation choices and explore ways to promote low-carbon priorities. The City of Surrey is shedding light on their transportation policies by engaging citizens in a nine-week course about municipal decisions and processes. The transportation lecture program started here in Surrey six years ago. We wanted to give people the opportunity to have some understanding how the decisions are made behind some of these quite important policy directions that the city has. Guest speakers and city tours expose students to regional policies, day-to-day -day operational and management decisions and long-term transportation visions. Tonight we're having the students doing a planning exercise where they are being tasked at designing a road cross section that takes into account uh, light rail transit on Fraser Highway. So no trees? No, well, no two meters. Well, I don't know. Th there will be a freaking should, should we do it? In six years, the course has welcomed more than 150 students. I'm fine with saying forget it and just doing one lane of traffic in each direction. Not only Surrey residents, but a range of people from all municipalities. So I am a transportation engineer myself. I actually, I'm quite, uh, quite new in the uh, Metro Vancouver area. I used to be 
uh, living in uh, Edmonton, so it's great for me to understand Surrey and Vancouver in general as well. There's students, there's commuters, there's cyclists, cycling enthusiasts. That's really interesting to see all these different views and perspectives. So I didn't know when I started that I was going to be running for city council, but throughout the campaign, because transportation was such a big issue, I really felt that it added some weight to my credibility as a potential candidate for city council. It was interesting because it was really inspirational. I found it inspirational. I'm now on the transportation and infrastructure committee, so it really helped to provide a foundation there as well. As a city, you know, we are defined by our growth and our evolution, and a very rapid evolution, and this course gives people an understanding that as a city we have changed significantly and that's what makes this course really uh, a pleasure to give and I hope really interesting for people to be part of. It's been a year since Metro Vancouver's Food Scraps landfill van was introduced and for the next steps in waste reduction, creative strategies are increasingly part of the conversation. We take a look at two ways students in the region have been involved so far. It's not every day you see a little girl drive past in a garbage truck, but then again it's not every day an 11 year old gets to see her artwork displayed on the vehicle that picks up residential garbage. That's really cool. <laughs> Elena Massing created her poster during New Westminster's annual environmental poster contest. You can see yeah. where my green marker yeah. ran out. <laughs> we offer it every year to the grade five and six elementary schools here in New Westminster. The poster contest is run over um, the Earth Day each year, and which is April 22nd, so it gives that opportunity for the classes to be involved with an environmental activity uh, during that period. The contest is a joint venture by the City and School Board of New Westminster. It contributes to awareness around regional waste reduction, which is important since residential actions are a key part of the goal to reduce waste. The goal is to bring environmental awareness to our community. It's important to start young because when they get older, they carry on these actions um, further and even with their families. I try to recycle what I can. Like if I've used a piece of paper already, if I'm doing something that's not really important, I try to just use the other side so I don't have to throw it away. I try to do as much as I can. Elena's poster is designed to represent the earth. I made the top words zero waste yellow to sort of be like the sun. And then I had reduce, reuse, recycle on the side as blue, sort of like water. And then for the tree, I had sort of the bad words like pollution or global warming in the uh, like brown sort of dirt and then for the actual tree I tried to do good words like peace or recycle or habitat. But what Elena's poster really represents is hope for the future when a new generation will understand the need for all of us to be better stewards of our planet. In Burnaby, students are taking an active role implementing and monitoring their food scrap recycling programs. Last year around September, Burnaby South got 20 new bins where we mapped out possible locations and we placed them where they were needed. Let's see how we're doing today. At Mosscrop Secondary, food scraps recycling got underway at the start of this school year. We knew we wouldn't have hundreds of thousands of dollars for flashy containers, so it was really kind of getting down to brass tacks. How were we going to uh, make this happen, more or less, with the materials that we had to work with? We went around the school and we marked the best locations for food scraps bins, making sure that each bin had to be at least 50 feet apart from each other. The students met weekly through the Burnaby Youth Sustainability Network. We would discuss both problems and solutions um, for each individual school. Metro Vancouver produced a popular Food Isn't Garbage campaign and made the print materials widely available for public use, including in schools. We have posters set up all across the school and with these posters we hope to promote the initiative further. It's a great opportunity for students to step up and, and be leaders and, and uh, help change the culture. The main thing that will make the food scraps program a success is to 
uh, make sustainability attractive and make it in to be sustainable. It's also our responsibility to create new programs and systems so future generations don't have to deal with that. Thanks to the municipalities, people and organizations who help tell these stories. Check out the Metro Vancouver blog for more videos and articles about our great region. For Metro Vancouver Close Up, I'm Dachmar Timmer. Coming up after the break, the sustainable region. Thank you.